actually faced a studio audience the first time in this election. So I think it should be pretty lively and well worth the watch. Well, let's get more on this now from the writer Charlie Peters and Dr. Faiza Shaheen, the director of the Centre for Labour and Social Studies. Good, after to, good afternoon to you both. Thank you for joining us. Charlie, let's start with you first of all. How important is tonight's debate, do you think, going to be? I think it's going to be important for Theresa May to re-establish herself as the uh, right choice of Prime Minister for this country. She has had a wobble recently. Um, this general election has been more about the personalities between the two leaders. And that's very strong for the Conservatives. She's able to promote herself as the strong and stable option, safe with the economy and safe with the country's security. And being able to present herself in that way against um, the chaos of Jeremy Corbyn is very strong for her. And I'm sure she'll be able to get that message across tonight. And Faisal, would you agree, is it an important show tonight for both of them? And what will they be focusing on? Yeah, it's very important because what we've seen over the last few weeks is Theresa May's uh, reputation or self-styled reputation of being strong and stable really fall apart. Another U-turn after many U-turns since she's been prime minister. Um, and on the flip side, we've seen Corbyn grain in popularity. So I think, are we going to see more of the same? So where Theresa May hasn't been very good at in those interview situations where she comes across a bit robotic, um, whereas Jeremy Corbyn seems quite open to those sort of styles of debate and discussion. It's very important because people will get, be getting a flavour of the type of leader. So putting aside all that we hear in the media, really seeing them up front and personal. Yeah, so Charlie, would you agree with that? Theresa May's a little bit robotic. She doesn't have that much experience doing these live Q&A, especially with the live studio audience. How do you think she'll cope with that? Well, she has, um, early on in her prime ministerial career, she did have uh, a few wobbles, especially in, uh, in the Commons during prime minister's questions. But no, she, um, you know, she's able to put her message across in a calm and composed way. I'm sure she'll be able to do that tonight. Faiza, I guess the question for Jeremy Corbyn would be that he doesn't have as much experience with those direct um, interviews, those hard interviews, um, like with Jeremy Paxman. How do you think he's going to cope with that and, you know, cope with some of the wobbles that he's had and the questions that he's had when it comes to, you know, involvement with the IRA in particular? Yeah, so we saw a little bit about that with Andrew Neil interview with Peston yesterday. Um, and I think, actually, I think because he's quite an honest politician, as far as these things go, you can get a sense that he will answer those questions as best as he can. But at the same time, of course, like most politicians, um, he'll be briefed on, on some of these issues. Like the IRA issue is old ground now. He's heard those questions again and again. He'll know, you know how to answer those, how to start talking about the issues. I mean, for me, from both leaders, I'm really, really keen to hear them talk about you know, what they plan on social care, what they plan on investment in our economy, how they plan to tackle things like climate change, which we haven't heard anything about in this election, housing, NHS, schools, the things that people really care about. And I think it's very important for both leaders, and I think this is true of Jeremy Corbyn especially, to move away from some of those issues like the IRA, the old issues that you know, where the ground has been covered, and talk about the future. Well, indeed, and um, Charlie, Theresa May will be hoping to do that too. What kind of issues do you think she should be focusing on? I'm guessing she's going to want to move away from that row regarding social care and her policies in the manifesto. Well, security and immigration are the two things that the Conservatives are pushing hard on at the moment. Unfortunately, their manifesto was very poor on the economy. They abandoned a lot of Conservative principles. They attacked free markets. For a lot of Conservatives, that was extremely worrying. Now they're realising, actually, that a lot of the country quite like left-wing politics. They quite like, you know, increased tax. They quite like more money on social care, more money on, on the NHS. And so they're realising now that, for the first time in many elections, their message isn't one of stable money, sound money. It's actually going to be on immigration and security. Now, that's, that's good for the Conservatives because the Labour Party, in its current formation, is, uh, is led by a man who calls terrorists his friends. And the Shadow Chancellor has praised the bombs and the bullets of the IRA. So it's absolutely right that the Conservatives push on the security issue. Faisal, what's your response to that? Very clear on the issues of immigration that actually Theresa May and the Conservatives have failed to reach those targets time after time. Um, and there's also a lot of businesses that are upset about those kinds of targets, which also includes students. So could hurt our universities as well. So, you know, there's a real question about immigration targets being that popular across the board, um, especially given the lack of credibility the Conservatives have on that issue. On security, look, we've been having the same old approach to security for a while, the status quo approach. And actually, I think a lot of people are listening 
to the Labour Party, to Jeremy Corbyn, which comes in from a, a different kind of non-status quo approach and saying, actually, maybe it's about time that we start looking at that bigger picture. We start taking a new approach because what we're doing right now is clearly not really keeping us safe in, in at the levels that we want to be kept safe. Um, so I don't think it's a matter of Conservatives being able to stick to those old traditional conservatives issues of immigration and terror. I think actually the electorate has woken up to a lot of these issues. And that's what we've seen over time that, you know, we just heard there that, oh, the electorate likes left wing policies. Look, the electorate is facing NHS cuts, is getting school uh, letters home from their head teachers um, saying that they, the schools don't have enough money. These are issues that people face day to day and they want to hear new responses. They don't want to hear the same old thing and they don't want to just hear political point scoring. Well, as Faisal said, Charlie, the momentum really has been behind Jeremy Corbyn's campaign and Labour have, especially in the polls, recently had a bit of a surge in support. Is this a lose-lose situation for Theresa May tonight? Can she regain that ground? Well, it's not as bad as people are making it out to be. She's still by far the most popular leader available out of all the parties that are putting forward. Um, and, you know, the polls that are still showing, you know, an eight-point lead for the Tories, a nine-point lead, they're doing very well. In, in, in other general elections, this would be seen as Conservatives running away to victory. It's just because the, the lead before was so ridiculously high that anything lower than, you know, a 15-point lead is now seen as weak. It's, it's all a bit silly, really. The Conservatives are going to win this general election, and they're going to do it quite comfortably. Well, Fraser, you've heard it there. The Conservatives are going to win. Do you think we should be taking these polls for granted, or do you think that maybe we should be taking them a little bit more seriously? Look, there's been issues with polls for the last year, and they've tried to correct for some of that, but there's a lot of difference between what each of the polls are saying. Look, for me, it's about making sure we air the issues. I'm a policy geek. I want to hear about what each party is plans to do on the economy, on society, on issues of from immigration to Brexit to housing. And I think, for me, we've got to have this conversation, what we're hearing, whether the Conservatives win or don't win. We are hearing very clearly from the public right now that they are, they do want more investment in public services. They are scared of another five years of cuts, which is what the Conservatives are offering. So I think there's something very interesting here, despite the end result, and, and we'll have to come to that when it comes to it and, and, and analyse that. But I think what we're, what we're hearing from the public right now is that this isn't the same old election, this isn't the same old issues, and there isn't the same old approaches. They actually want to listen to something different. OK, Faiza, thank you. So, Charlie, just very quickly, how would you measure success from tonight's show, then? Uh, I think Theresa may be able to put her message across in a very calm and composed way, tell the voters what they need to hear on all the basic issues. That will count as success for Theresa May. Jeremy Corbyn will have to do something spectacular to come across uh, in a successful way. All right, well, I'm afraid we have to leave it there. Charlie Peters and Dr. Faisal Shaheen, thank you for joining us both here on Sky News this afternoon.